Hey everyone, it's John with Roadkill Incorporated here. So for a couple of years, I've been wanting to do a video about alternate arrow key arrangements of early computers because there are some really funky ones. Like I'm talking about the arrows pointing in weird directions and that kind of thing. But then the 8-bit guy beat me to it in his video here. When I first saw his video, I was completely bummed out because I thought, you know, gee, that's what I get waiting two years. But as time went on, I realized I have dozens of computers that he doesn't have. Plus, he's more about the history and the context. While I don't know any of that myself, my channel's not really the place to learn anything after all. It's more the place to go, wow, that's kind of weird. That's kind of messed up. And as you'll see, I've got a lot of ones that do that. So stay tuned. It's an interesting topic. You'd think the up, down, left, right arrow key arrangement would be completely obvious and that from the beginning of time, people would have intuitively adopted it, but nope, not really. I mean, especially you would think because early computers were just a cursor moving around, wouldn't you want a super efficient means of moving that cursor in, in the obvious directions? But yeah, it's not apparent that they were thinking about that at all. So let's jump right in. This little guy is a Soviet ZX Spectrum clone, I think. Pretty terrible keyboard. It looks like the keys have stickers on them. It gets a few points uh, by actually having all four arrows, but they're super in inconvenient and only selectable by pressing the caps shift key. What's a caps shift key? Minus a few points for having a completely unusable keyboard, and I don't have a power adapter to try it effectively anyway, so oh well. Ah, so I like this one a lot better. Still terrible to type on, but I forgive it because the keys just look so great. This is an MSX machine, for those who aren't aware. Uh, MSX is a hardware software standard from the 80s and 90s that basically didn't exist in the US. So if you're in the US and you haven't heard of it, you're forgiven. There are hundreds of MSX computers made by a dozen manufacturers all over the world. Um, as long as they stayed within the standard, they were able to do any goofy thing they wanted, so there are a lot of super crazy MSX computers out there. There are several iterations of the MSX standard, like MSX2, MSX2+, Plus, that got better and better, but I like the original MSX because many models had red variants like this one, and I collect red computers because, you know, I, I guess I like red. Um, MSX is also great because they almost always have very distinct arrow keys, but this Casio PV7 outdoes itself by turning the arrows into a Joypad 1, and also four arrow keys on the top row. But I don't know why you'd use the ones up there when you have your very own Joypad 1, but hey, whatever. Okay, so here's a super weird one I guarantee you've never seen. This is a Videotex Command X, or a Command X Videotex, I'm not really sure. It's sort of like the Nabu, which you may have heard of, except probably even more of a failure than Nabu, from what I can tell. These connected to your TV cable and acted as some sort of terminal, and they used centralized software from, I guess, Command X Central? Or I think that's how it worked. One bonus about this one over Nabu is the keyboard is wireless, so you don't have to trip over a 20-foot cable to get to your couch. Plus, it's got really awesome fake wood paneling you just don't see anymore for some reason. Aside from the fact that it has microwave oven-like keys, it does score points for having a distinct arrow key arrangement, plus diagonal arrow keys even in the corners, which is cool. Um, Plus, I would bet money it's the only computer ever with a surprise button. A surprise button. Can you believe that? Is this a laptop computer or is it some sort of futuristic gun? It is actually, believe it or not, a gun. No, I'm just kidding. It's a laptop. Ha, huh, so that was an attempt at a TikTok and it didn't do as well as I hoped it would, but uh, I thought it was funny even if you guys didn't. Anyway, this is a Dreamwriter IT. I think it's a Windows CE machine. There are a lot of strange toy-like portable CE machines out there. It does have all four arrow keys, but in a very awkward arrangement wrapping the corner of the keyboard. But hey, at least they're real keys. And now we have the Electrodex Plus by Rolodex. Possibly Rolodex's only entry into the pseudo computer market. I haven't heard from them lately, so I'm not sure. It's got all four arrows, but two each on either side of the keyboard, which is an interesting choice. Seems odd, but not having powered this on, I can't say how well the arrangement works. Maybe it's great, who knows? Certainly the round M&M calculator keys couldn't be a wonderful experience, though. And right into another bizarro computer, the Suzuki UP-2. 
dash two up dash two language studying system. I have a thing for computers with embedded tape drives. Not sure why, since I don't really use tape. I got this one from Egypt, I believe. Uh, but anyway, I guess you load the language tape in and then you start studying. Has all four arrows, which is cool, but combines them into two keys, kind of like the Commodore 64. But this one makes it even more awkward by putting them in the upper right instead of down right where your hands might actually be. Okay, so this one's kind of a sad little computer. The Laser 310 was made by, well, Laser, you know, the toy computer company that also made the Laser 128 Apple IIc clone and the Laser XT. It has three arrow keys you have to get to by holding shift, but the weird thing is there's a down arrow image on the space bar? What? Not really sure what's up with that. I uh, would need to power it on to see what that's about, but I'm feeling too lazy, so you'll just have to live in suspense. Oh wow, so what's this stylish briefcase sitting next to the Laser 310? Could it be a Laser 500? And look at the giant chunky arrow keys it has, almost like an MSX. I'm really getting excited here. So I guess if you want the arrow keys and to impress your friends with a briefcase, those are the reasons to go with a 500 over a 310. And it doesn't stop there because you've also got this really awesome tape drive. I just love tape drives. Nothing screams 80s vaporwave aesthetic like a nice old chunky tape drive that I'll look at for hours but never actually use. So what are these? Maybe lunch boxes? No, actually, these are Minitel terminals from France or Spain or somewhere around there. I think it's the same sort of Nabu Command X concept they've got going. They only have left or right keys, uh, only the right one has left or right keys, and there's no apparent arrows on the left one, although it does have an e-space key, I guess that's French. So they fail when it comes to arrows, but I gotta say the keys are metal, and they have a very satisfying clunkiness to them. Um, they almost have a click when you press them. I haven't encountered anything else like that, and they're just great. Now this is an MSX, but it looks more like a toy. I think it's got a bunch of educational programs in ROM or something, plus MSX DOS, whatever that is. It has all four arrows and bonus points for them being red, very cool, but it has four different function keys inside the arrows. I wonder how they decided on those. Uh, the keyboard is absolutely horrible. Looks like it might be okay, but when you press a key, it takes several seconds for the key to come back up. I'm guessing it's got some super crusty old rubber dome mechanisms in there. So now the Bulgarian Apple II clone, the famous computer that looks like it's carved out of a huge chunk of butter. It has a down arrow, but that seems to be about it, unless maybe it has more and I just can't read Bulgarian, which is always possible. Ah uh, yes, now one of the coolest and strangest computers of all time, and also super small, this is the Olivetti Quaderno, featuring a built-in voice recorder and answering machine, believe it or not. Not bad tiny little keys for its size, and it has all four arrows in a modern configuration, plus it has an additional up arrow in bold and blue, I, I guess for when you're very, very adamantly serious about going up. Page up and page down as well, so, you know, lots of odd choices and options on this one. Okay, so a Soviet computer, I don't know the name offhand, has a real keyboard and some red keys, which is a bonus, but it's not quite the best arrangement, and what's up with this diagonal up left key, and why the two space bars? I can't imagine a use for that. Moving on, we have more Soviet computers, and these two are fun, possibly the crappiest keyboard I've ever encountered. Uh, when you press any key, all of the key keys go down. It's like the keyboard is not secured inside the computer. In fact, I'm pretty sure that is the case. The keyboard is not secured. These computers are new old stock and very clean and nice and, and new looking, but so incredibly junky and light. It's another one that just seems like a toy. And there's that up left arrow again. There must have been some odd reason in the Soviet Union to refer to the up left. I just don't get it. And two down arrows next to one another? What the heck is that? Is there some relation to the two space bars on the previous computer? I just don't understand. And yes, I just had to show the box for this one. This poor 80s lady pretending to care is pretty hilarious. You know, I take back what I said about the last one having the worst keyboard ever. 
because this Tesla computer is actually the worst ever. If you press these keys, I swear, they will never come up again. They're that bad. And there we have the super important Soviet up to the left key. And strangely, the up key is red rather than blue. I like red, I really do. I just don't know why it's red and I probably never will. Here we have two variations of the Hitachi H1 MSX computer, very aesthetically appealing machines. The red one has a great arrow key configuration with strange molded custom sloping shapes. I don't get it. Look at those. It's, it's bizarre. And the white one, unfortunately, has one of those wrap around the corner situations, which is very disappointing for MSX because they usually do a lot better than that. Worthy of note, these Japanese computers also have handles. The manual, which I have somewhere in a pile, shows a young Japanese girl walking to school with her Hitachi H1. I wonder if that actually happened, but then Japan can be weird, so it probably did. And here's one of my all-time favorites. Look at this absolute tank of a computer, the Tulip System 1. I mean, it's crazy. The keys have this amazingly wonderful springy feel and sound. I've heard it's somewhat related to the Exidy Sorcerer, not really sure, but it has an 8086 processor and it's one of those machines that existed in the gray area between MS-DOS and CPM. It's got all the arrows plus some extra. I don't think it's a Soviet computer, but it's got the old up to the left. So who knows? Maybe Tulip had some Soviet customers. Um, yeah, listen to that sound though, it's really amazing. Here's the work slate, such a cute and aesthetically pleasing little computer. If you can call it a computer, who knows really, uh, might be more of an organizer type deal, but uh, so well designed. It's got an aero pad, which is nice, and of course I'm a sucker for microcassette drives and computers, so I had to have one of these. Okay, this is a Zenith Z-Note, kind of hard to pronounce. Had to get a Zenith in here. Uh, this guy has keys like an Apple IIc. I'm not sure why Zenith thought the Apple IIc keys were anything worth aspiring to, but there you go. It's got the standard arrow configuration. Uh, plus of note, it has a down right and an up left. So it satisfies all our Soviet friends and also whoever the down right people are. Next, we've got the Franklin Ace 100 Apple II clone. This thing is absolutely huge, and it's the first Apple clone from Franklin, and um, yeah, it's just a weird one. There's room on top of it for two small monitors. It's that big. It only has left and right keys, but of note is that the left key is bigger than the right. I guess someone at Franklin thought going left was more important. Would be really weird to sit in on the meeting where they decided that. And now we've come to possibly my favorite arrow keys of all time. They're on the Yamaha SX100 and Victor HC30 Japanese MSX computers. Basically the same computer by different manufacturers, which happened quite a bit. Fun fact, Victor is JVC. JVC is an acronym for Japanese Victor Company. Bet you didn't know that. See, you're learning something here after all. Anyway, these have these big, chunky, amazing arrows that are so satisfying. I just can't get enough of them. They're, they're really great for playing video games. They look kind of funny, but the feel is there. And finally, wanted to save one of the best for last. This is the Canon Cat, originally sold as a word processor, but under the hood, it, it's a computer, it, and it does a lot more than that. It was designed by Jeff Raskin, who had something to do with the original Macintosh design, and you can, you can kind of see it. Uh, the cool thing about the Cat is it's really uh, sort of a first principles design as far as what a word processor should be, and it's years ahead of its time if you look at the, the time frame. All it has are leap forward and leap back keys, but pressing those in combination with other keys, it's surprisingly easy to use. It's got these use front keys also, which are basically shift keys, and they activate the commands printed on the front of the keys. I was totally intimidated the first time I tried it, but within about five minutes I found I was getting around pretty easily because it's such an intelligent design with lots of built-in functions that just makes sense. Okay, well, that brings us to the end, and that's good because my voice is starting to go and my dog needs to be let out. But, uh, yeah, weird history of arrow keys we have, uh, isn't it? Uh, makes you feel fortunate we finally got to the obvious and most functional configuration. Uh, kind of gross and covered in dust as it is. 
But uh, don't think that's the end of the strangeness, though. Maybe if I get motivated, I'll do another video on bizarre trackpad and trackball locations. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.